rapidly. Okay, so you see the setup right there? Mm -hmm. It's all positioned in the middle of both stances. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy to put them on. <laughs> You've yeah. got a C square down there, and that's fine. I don't care practice wise. Mm -hmm. But when you look at his hand, yeah. yeah, his left hand's a little more left for the golf ball. There's a little bit more forward shaft lean. Yeah. Um, and that's. Okay. Just between belly button and left sleeve. Yeah. Now you go a five iron. Ball position's obviously more forward. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to see the hands in front of the ball as much. Yeah. But the hand over the golf ball is still really left in first fleet. Yeah. Even when you get the foul though, he's got it back. So maybe he just has hair. But still, I don't know, it's probably belly button first fleet. That's a six or five, five iron. iron. Yep. Okay. That's a five iron. Mm -hmm. So the other thing too is a driver. Ball might be here, but yeah. the handle's still going to be belly button first fleet. So your hand will be behind the club head a little bit with the driver. Yeah. Then what about um, like a five wood or thing? Generally, what I start people with and what I kind of explain to them is you can go pretty basic with three ball positions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's a driver's so thing. It's a little wider. You go seven, eight, nine, right in the middle. Yeah. Six and five iron, maybe one ball left in the middle. In your fairway with your hybrid and your driver, one ball left for that. Now, of course, once we start trying to hit it lower, higher, fade it, draw it, and then move the ball or the ball, you know, down a line, up a line, and then we're going to move it around a little bit. But that's just the kind of generic middle, one ball left, two balls left, four. So I am mid on it, fair way from high distance. And then what about hand for each of those? Hand stay the same. So yeah. hands are the same, but club face goes with the three mm -hmm. lines, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so hands are a little bit ahead for the seven, eight, nine. But then they get kind of even with it, even six six for five and five and six and then slightly behind. Yeah. Because yeah. that's that's why I grabbed him with a driver is when you look at that. See, obviously, the shaft of the golf club gets further away mm -hmm. as it's working its way up, but still the handle is between belly button and first feet. Okay. So he's got a driver a little bit favoring more of an upward angle, mm -hmm. so he's trying to hit it on the way up. Yeah. Whereas the seven iron, the handle stays in the same place, but the ball comes back because he's trying to hit it on the way down yeah. you know, by moving the ball in his hand. Mm -hmm. so this might be a 54 degree angle, either 54 or 56, I'm going to measure it right now. I know my 7 iron is 51 degrees at that. Yeah. So the good news for me and you and anybody that plays this game, if it's 51 degrees at address and 56 degrees at the way back mm -hmm. and 57 degrees as it comes in, or 55 degrees as it comes in, yeah. then my dispersion pattern is going to be narrow. Yeah. But if it's 51 and then 65 and 40, yeah. then obviously I'm going to have some pretty errant golf shots. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So when you watch you and Ernie take the club back, yeah. you both get a little upright in the angle that you're going back. You get there for different reasons. You get the club coming back to the inside and under the plane a little bit right here. And you can see he's totally opposite. He's over the plane and outside his hands. So he's probably like over the plane and yours is under. Now, if you continue that path, you wrap it right around your back pocket, and you need a golf ball way up here to be able to swing through because you're on a flat plane. That's when you start lifting. And see, as he goes up, he's got a big issue right there. Yeah. That's not the plane you've got to go for the go on, right? Uh -huh. As you go up, that's not the plane you've got to go for the go on. 
Yeah. So when you both get to the top, you notice that his club head is a little bit to the right of the handle mm -hmm. at the top. Yeah. And when you look at yours, yours is also a little bit to the right of the handle. Uh -huh. So what we call that, your target line's right here. So at the top of the swing, in a perfect world, that would be parallel to the target. Yeah. So you both are what we call across the line, as opposed to you have to put it just a little to the right. Mm -hmm. You could be parallel, or you could be what we call laid off, so the club head's a little bit left of the line at the top. Mm -hmm. When a player is across the line at the top, like you are, most of the time we see them force their hands this way in an effort to try and get the club head to the inside, yeah. to try and hit it from the inside. Mm -hmm. So when you watch your hands, so their first move is towards your right shoulder. Yeah. Now, watch his club head. First, his hands didn't move towards his right shoulder, did they? But he looped Love it. Hmm. I want to teach you to loop. Right. <laughs> he hit 500 off all the day, and he's actually worked with Harmon to try and get that pitch out of his golf swing. Yeah. So what happens is you have what they call an over-the-top move. Mm -hmm. And as soon as your hands go out, and your feet, mm -hmm. And that's why you hit some good ones. Because uh -huh. recovery, you got the club, okay, it looks pretty good right there. Yeah. Put that slight out motion there. Yeah. Cause you to be outside here. Okay. So we'll you basically have two issues causing you to come over the top. One is the club across the line at the top. Mm -hmm. Two is the space that you have between your right Hip and where it started right there. Yeah. See how much more space he has between here yeah. and there. Hmm. That space is where his right elbow is. Yeah. See? So your elbow doesn't have any, anywhere to go because yeah. your hips there. So you work out around your hip a little bit, and again, right. that's why your hands are out too far. Now, the reason that's happening is, you get your back swing here. I think you're in a pretty good position. Two places. One, you're definitely behind the golf ball, right? Mm -hmm. And two, and on top of your right leg. Mm -hmm. But your motion, body motion, is out of sequence. You have a load. You have a rotate. Then once you're on the right side, is so there? Not, yeah, and that's so I should have shifted earlier. I should have shifted before you even rotate. Gotcha. Let's see when you watch his. So he just shifted left. So, right. Already shifted. Yep. so that is probably where your fat shots came in. Uh -huh. Because when you look at where you are now, you got. 75% of your body behind the golf ball at impact. Yep. Bad news for you there. There's a lot of ground back here, right? And when you look at where so again right here you see a very hint some khaki color right there. Yeah. It's a guy's pants like See how much of it you see there? Yeah. And you just keep moving left. Right. Huh. So those are, I call that polar opposite. Yeah.
He's 80% in front, you're 70% behind. Mm -hmm. So when you have here your circle, there's the ball, mm -hmm. you take your center over here, yeah. and you're down the bottom out early. Yeah. And if you take your center over here, and you're going to miss the ground behind it, hit balls and hit ground. Mm -hmm. Good news is you're loaded. Yeah. I don't have to teach you that part. Yeah. I've got to teach you the shift part. On the Yeah. Okay. And flatten your club out a little bit. So mm -hmm. club motion first. We can actually do them both at once. We do some half swing work. Mm -hmm. See, we're getting a lot closer. On the left is the new one. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's where your hands are. Mm -hmm. There's where they started. They're starting to stay on plane. They're not coming in. But because your left knee's not straightening, your knees are out here, so your hands are working around your knees, which okay. we'll get to that in a minute. Now you look at this. How's that one? So that's that wait. just a minute. Ago. Okay. This is the one that went inside a little bit. That's the one that stays through the shaft between your forearms, above that outside your hand. Mm -hmm. About as neutral as neutral can be right here. Again, that's just a rehearsal of the takeaway. But now when you look at it here, watch on the left, this is before there, see right there? There are the hands, there are the club, there is everything. Now you look on the right. difference is the right arm's a lot straighter mm -hmm. on the right. And the hips are a lot less active. Yeah. What's his lower body? It increases. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Because in order to wind something up, something has to stay stiff. Yeah. So they use their lower body to stabilize and to wind into. Everybody runs into a point where it's that as far as I can turn without a little help yeah. here. So right about now, watch his hips start to turn a little bit. Then they turn off. But not a lot. Mm -hmm. So he's got 90 degrees of shoulder turn there with 20 degrees of hip turn. Mm -hmm. He's really wound up. Whereas mm -hmm. the amateur player that gets 120 degrees of shoulder turn, yeah. coupled with 80 degrees of hip turn, he's got a 40 degree differential. He's not really wound up like a tour player would be with 90 degrees of mm -hmm. So that's where the power comes from. So the amateur player push more? Mm -hmm. And hopes to get power. Right. And they forget that. If you're rotating, rotating, rotating hips and shoulders together, yeah. you're not really winding up. You got a lot of rotation, right. but you never get a wind up. Mm -hmm. So you have no spring, no coil, no nothing to gotcha. get club head speed. Gotcha. See, I'll take that all day. Yeah.
compared to that. You got better arm extension. Yeah. More over your right side, and you got more torque built in the middle of the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to watch on both pictures here. Oops. Kind of how we're working on this. How you need to go to the range and work on this as well mm -hmm. is, as you can see, I've got 51.3 degrees on my order and get set up. My shaft should be right on that yellow line. Okay. I have the same problem to do. I can get the too far behind me and put it inside. Tomorrow. I have the benefit of having a video and having a camera and a laptop where I can draw this line and then kind of angle it for the Because as you started hitting a couple of those, and like I said, I know I said your posture was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Really good on the left. I used to do it more like that, but I stopped because I saw like I was just making suggestions. Maybe about a year ago, I went to the left of the. Because I would do, I would usually do it until I felt like the, the tightness in my um, hamstring mm -hmm. was how I need it. Mm -hmm. And that's why you feel like in your low back. I mean, any yeah. low back pain is because your hamstrings are too tight. Right. So as you feel that tightness, and you know, and like I said, this is just. You get set up over the golf ball thinking, okay, I feel that in my low back. Right. Because really, at your height, you're not much shorter than him. Right. And you look at, he's got a lot more than from his hip mm -hmm. than he does his knee. He's just six foot three. Yeah. Puts his hands hanging straight down. Now when you take the sub back, Like I said, every golf ball you hit at the range, mm -hmm. if it doesn't have any dimples, you look in the top part of that bucket right there. Yeah. You see the worn out ones, the stripes are worn out, some yeah. of them are Nike. If it's a Nike, don't even bother hitting a full swing because that's a six year old range ball. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't say tailor made and it's not shiny, yeah. probably not going to fly straight and accurate anyway. Okay. So do your half swings with that off the short key if you can. Yeah. Now when you look at the takeaway on the right, significantly better. Yeah. Still long, still not that bad. Yeah. Now if we can see your leg is going, we do. See so you see a lot more daylight 
under your right heel as you're coming into impact right there. Yeah. Like that. Am I right? Yeah. See, look, I'm not, there's where your heel is on the ground. Mm -hmm. You're kicking, pushing off of it. There's daylight under it right now. There's much more left leg exposure. Here, yeah. here, here. Now, it's not locked yet. Mm -hmm. It's not straightened up, but it's a lot more exposed than it is here. On, I can see your left knee in front of your right leg there. Yeah. See, I see it out here. Mm. You still see a little bit of it? That's where I start to see as much left knee as I do on the right. And then when you look at these same two pictures here, 31, this one. You know, and like I said, the good news for you is you're learning how to do this. It might only be a golf swing to here, but I'll tell you what, that's how you have to have a 40 yard pitch shot. Yeah. You know, the difference is, is you're going to have a little more in, yeah. but you're only going to go maybe to 9 o'clock to hit a 60 yard pitch shot. So what you're teaching yourself is how to keep the club on playing and hands on a short swing as well as a full swing. Mm -hmm. And then you're also teaching yourself that the next sequence of motions right here, how much more aggressively turning through the golf ball you are. Yeah. And now instead of being behind it. You know, and if this leg straightens up more, mm -hmm. you will stand more on that left side, but you're kind of leaning back a little bit because your body might leave. That leg's collapsed. It can't support you, yeah? Mm -hmm. But when you look at where that impact position is there, where your knee is. Yeah. Compression line from impact beyond. Okay. That guy's hands on the right, almost half the board. Mm -hmm. That on the left. Yeah. T Rex, alligator arms, <laughs> dinosaur, you know, they're just stuck to you. Yeah. And you look at the back pictures. Uh -huh. See, behind you, that's Adam Scott right there. Yeah. Well, that's Adam Scott right there, mm -hmm. and I see Carrie Webb here. Yeah. Carrie Webb is, well, there she is. Yeah. See how much longer it took before she was envisioned? Yeah. So you're definitely more over your left side, which again, that's going to improve the ground first, mm -hmm. and then uh, keeping it out in front of you. Right. Move to, to the swing. Mm -hmm. And if you can get those two, then we can build it a little higher. Yeah. But you obviously have issues coming in the impact and leaving impact, which is the bottom half of the circle. Right. So we get that cleaned up, then fuck, if the bottom half is good, mm -hmm. the top half should be okay. Yeah. But if the bottom half has an error, right, it's affecting up top, mm -hmm. on the end run.